Hey guys, it's Elisa. Welcome back to the Elisa Redwoods channel. Today we are talking about a sensitive but important subject, which is how to communicate and connect with your pets that have passed on. So before we get started, I just want to put it out there for anybody who's not sure your pets, because, because they have left the physical realm does not mean for a millisecond that they don't exist anymore or that they are gone. No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. The soul is a permanent thing. They are just without their physical body. Well, we're just jumping right into this, aren't we? <laughs> okay, so the soul, human or animal, is a permanent thing. Um, once they leave the physical realm, yes, they no longer are in their physical body, which is a good thing because it, it's old. Their physical body was old and tired and aching. But their soul, the essence of who they are, 100% still exists. They are just in a different realm. But the good news is that they, because they are not bound by their physical suit anymore, can come and go through the realms as they please. And they choose to be with you way more than you would ever expect. Uh, like all the time, like a lot, a lot, okay? So I'm not saying that they don't, you know, ever leave, you know, like if you're at work, they're not gonna be sitting around in your bedroom <laughs> when they are not bound by anything. They're a free spirit and they can go to, um, to another, you know, beautiful realm. They can, again, they can come and go as they please and they're with you way more than you know. Now you can teach yourself to kind of, um, tune in and strengthen your um your psychic abilities it's not as quite as hard as you think just a little bit of discipline and repetition and you can build the um skill i guess to be able to sense when they are around so another thing that's really important and very cool is that when you tune into them um, through your thought when you start thinking about them, when you call on them, it's like they um, have, like, have like an old school beeper. Remember pagers? <laughs> Did I just date myself? Oh my God. It's like they are paged and alerted that my person, my human is wanting to talk to me, is thinking about me and, and they're gonna be there in a second. So when they first leave us, um, and I think that a lot of us intuitively know this, that the pain that we're feeling, the sadness that we're feeling is not on their behalf. Or if you didn't know that, then now you know. It definitely, your sadness should not be on their behalf. It's really about your loss. The pain you're feeling is about you losing them and the physicality of them that you knew. Um, because there definitely should be no sadness for, for them because like I said, not, not only can they be in this physical realm with you whenever they want, they now can be in, other, in another beautiful realm with other animals that have, have been connected to you throughout your life and family members and, and so on and so forth. So in a way, this is gonna sound terrible, but in a way um, you should be happy. You should be happy for them. And so the problem lies in where our grief is so strong when they first pass and that's you know when we really really want to connect but the thing is when you are that grief stricken your energy your vibration drops you know drastically and any um, entity human or animal when they're in spirit form is already so much higher than us vibrationally we're down here so and then when we are you know sad or angry or any, any other negative emotion um, we drop even lower so there's a huge gap and it makes it much harder for them to um, make them make you aware of their presence when you're just stuck in that in that pain. So again, I'm not saying to um, not feel your feelings, not let them out. Definitely cry. You need to get those emotions out for sure. That's super important. Um, but when the time comes for you to um, sit down and try to connect with them, you do want to be in a um, calmer, you know, more positive place because you, um, you're going to have to try to raise your vibration as much as possible. So meditate for five minutes, um, ring some bells, light some incense, do some sage, do some Tibetan bowls, listen to some meditation music, um, play musical instruments, sing a little bit, whatever you need to do, be out in nature to raise your vibration as much as you can and then sit down and try to connect with them. So you can start by saying their name out loud, just thinking about them, closing your eyes and visualizing them in as much detail as possible and asking them, talking to them. They, they hear you. They're already there. They are already there. You're just 
because we're so bogged down with everything that's on this physical realm, all our problems, all, all of our issues with our, our ego personality, so, talk to them, tell them whatever you need to say, whatever you need to get off your chest, and then ask them f to give you a sign. Ask them for a visitation. Ask them to um, come to you in your dreams. Ask them to come to you on the astral realm. And you will know the difference. That'll probably have to be another video, but there's a huge difference between seeing them in a dream and seeing them um, on the astral realm. Both can be, you know, very nice, but you're gonna know, you'll know 100% when you've had a visitation. And if you ask for it, if you set that intention and then kind of surrender and like let it go after that, and then discipline yourself to, um, well, now we gotta talk about dream recall. Okay, so hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so when you're talking to them, when you're sitting in your meditation, eyes closed, which, whichever, just believe that after you've asked them for a sign, or ask them for a, for a visitation that it is going to come when the time is right, when you are not bogged down and they're, they have more access to you when your vibration is, is um, lifted a little higher. Another thing you can do is make a pet altar. Now this is more so for you, but they definitely see it. They know what's going on and I'm sure they appreciate it. You can choose a little, a little table or whatever platforms and in, in the backyard where they used to play or in your bedroom wherever and you can put a you know a candle be responsible with the candles and a picture of them and maybe their collar or their ashes if you have their ashes maybe um if you if you clipped a piece of their fur before they passed away maybe the fur um maybe like a dog treat like a little offering you can even put just like a can of pet food um one of their old toys so it's literally just like um it's a pet it's a pet altar where you're gonna sit and release your emotions where you're going to sit and communicate with them and um, meet them in, in through meditation when you're when the second that you reach out to them through your heart center they're there and you're going to know it you're going to even though you may not sense their you know physicalness in the room when you're talking to them um, and reaching out to them through your heart center they are immediately there so what I want you to do is calm your mind, calm your breathing as much as possible and see if you hear anything, see if you feel anything, see if you sense anything with any of your senses. There's a good chance that you will if you're not, again, stricken by the grief in that moment. If you don't right away, you will at the very least feel, feel their energy. You will be connecting to their energy because they're there. You're, gonna, you're going to feel it. You, have, you just have to admit it to yourself that you do feel their energy once you try to connect to them through your heart center. Just talk to them. Just be vulnerable. Okay, so the next important step is to practice your dream recall. So um, before you're going to bed, as you're falling asleep, if you start to play, pay really close attention right before you fall asleep, where you're on that level of the in-between hypnagogic state, where you're in between awake, in between sleep, they have a lot easier time accessing you because there's no resistance there. So that would be a really good time to pay attention if you see a flicker of them go across the floor or um, I've seen my dog laying on my bed by my feet just like, whoa, oh my God. Or um, if you hear their purring as you're falling asleep or, or they're snoring, you know, that kind of thing. So when you first wake up in the morning, have a journal, pad of paper and a pencil by your bed and um, before you even open your eyes, before you start moving around, stay in that state, that in between wake and in between sleep, stay there and try to recall as much as you can remember from your night's sleep. If you start doing this every day, you are gonna be shocked at how quick, how good you get at recall and things are gonna start flooding back to you. Visitations that you would have not been aware of um, during the night because you didn't you didn't open yourself up to that will start coming into your awareness and you're just you're just gonna be like oh my god oh my god they were I was with them last night you know that kind of thing I swear it's amazing so re recall as much as possible grab that pad of paper start writing it down all that it really takes is the desire and the intention and your ability to be receptive and not have so much resistance like, oh, it's been three days and I, I haven't seen them or I haven't heard them. Like you can't, you have to be patient and just allow things to go naturally, you know, continue with your grieving process. But then when you try to connect, try to be in a better headspace during those few moments that you are, that you are trying to connect with them. And just remember that um, you need to make sure that subconsciously you this is what you want you do believe that you can you can connect to them um, make sure again just make sure that that's something that you're ready for 
um, because they don't want to scare you. So they're going to connect with you um, to the degree which they know that you're ready to handle. So, you know, don't be disappointed if you just, if, if you don't see them standing in front of you and they look like flesh and bone, I'm, that's extremely, extremely rare. So if you, if they know, and if you know that you're only able to handle seeing them in a dream for now, then that's, that's how it's going to happen. Now I've seen my pets that have passed away countless times on the dream realm and the astral realm. Um, my experiences are absolutely amazing. I am extremely grateful um, for the level of experiences that I've had. I, I know that they are extraordinary. Um, that I, I guess I could do another video on, on that. Um, but uh, I just wanted to throw in there that they um, want you to remember the good times. So for a lot of us, especially if we um, witnessed their death or if we had to put them down, we will always go back to that last day. Whew, <laughs> that was a rough one, right? Really, really, really rough. And they don't want that. They loved us unconditionally. That's why our bond with them was so strong. Sometimes some people say that our bond can be even stronger with anim animals than some humans because they have the ability to love us unconditionally. No matter what we did, no matter what we looked like, any of that, they, they loved us. And when they were alive, they wanted us to be happy. Have you ever uh, fell down and hurt yourself and your dog and you're like crying or whining or whatever and your dog comes up and, and he just and starts freaking, they start whining and you know kissing you because they know that you're hurt. They love you. They wanted you to be happy when they were alive and they still want you to be happy. Out of respect for them, it's really important to um, as much as possible focus on all the good times that you had with them. I mean, yes, the ending was hard, but what about the, the entire rest of the time that you had them? Think about all those amazing memories you had, like, you know, all the cuddles, all the love, all the funny moments, all the walks, you know, all of it. Like, they want you to concentrate on, on those times. And that also makes it much easier co to connect with them. Because when you're in that space of love and appreciation, that is when your vibration starts to raise. And I also just wanted to mention that, um, not only do I see my two most recent pets, the ones that were, you know, mine as a young adult, that I, my pets that I got when I was 22 years old, not only do I see them um, uh, pretty regularly, my pets from when I was a teenager, the pets that I had since childhood, will once in a while come visit me without me even having a, have thought of them for, for a really, really long time. They'll come to visit me and then I'll feel bad. Like, oh man, why am I not trying to connect with with this, you know, with Bubbles and, and everyone else. Like, they, the connection, the love bond connection that you had with every pet you've ever had um, never goes away. They will always love you and you will definitely see them when you're no longer in the physical realm. I do have another tip and I just want to preface by saying that even if you did not do this, it really, it matters not at all. You will still definitely be able to connect and communicate with your pets just as strong. But, um, one thing I did do with um, my two most recent pets that passed away is when they were still alive, I would tell them a few different times, whisper into their ear. I would say things like, when you leave this realm, please make sure you communicate with me as much as possible. Please come back, come back and visit me. There's nothing you can do to scare me. I want as much communication and, and a, a strong as relationship as I can with you after you're gone. So again, that's, that's not necessary to have a relationship with your pet after they have passed on, but it's something, you know, really special that you can do with the pets that you still have. Now, you can be anywhere when trying to communicate with them. You don't have to have um, them buried in your backyard or you don't need their ashes. You can be inside your house when you talk to them. You can be at the pet altar. You can be outside in your favorite place in nature. It does not matter because they are in spirit form. They can meet you wherever you're at instantly as soon as they feel that intention that you have to connect with them. It's almost like you're, you're calling them. When you have had that bond with them, it's unbreakable. So this is where meditation really helps. Even if you just do five minutes a day, um, it really kind of allows you to um, learn the difference between your waking mind and um, the, the place where you quiet your mind and tune into your higher self and tune into the spirit realm. There's a big difference in how those feel and you can learn to decipher when you're in that recept receptive, um, intuitive uh, space where you're open to the spiritual realm versus when you're in your kind of ego life, think thinking mundane, you know, 
monkey chatter type thoughts big difference there so meditation really does help and another great thing is to see like what we've learned from them like what did they teach us i feel like they would really appreciate you you know taking some time to think about those kinds of things you know did they teach you appreciation or maybe not taking things for granted or um, how to live in the moment or about unconditional love which is you know just so beautiful so just know again that they are with you they are just not in the physical body but the soul cannot be destroyed energy cannot be destroyed it can only be transformed so i, I really that's the biggest thing that i want you to take from this no matter what religion you believe in or if, wh whether you're an atheist spirit is spirit it's always going to be there so just know that you can tune in and talk to them anytime you want and they are listening and if you want to do the work to improve your psychic abilities then you can really take it a lot farther and have some amazing visitations while you're asleep or even while you're awake like me I'm gonna do a video on that um it's amazing they're still there so just know that um i wish all of you as much healing as you need and um, thank you for tuning in so much. I hope to see you guys again. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. If you're into any kind of topics that are esoteric, spiritual, manifestation, then you're on the right channel. Check out my Instagram at She's in the Redwoods, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Be nice to each other. Bye.